Yeah. It's uh, quite the wild series. Uh, my, my first exposure to Angeline was through the series because I'm from the East Coast. Uh, what was your first exposure to Angeline the person? Um, well, my first exposure was... Pro oh, sorry. No, go ahead, Mario. Right. It's going to keep it short, Alex, don't worry. Uh, my first exposure as a foreigner was pretty much this show. That was that was a lot of my, that was my crash course into who Angeline was. Yes. And mine was shortly after I moved to LA. I did, I'm also from the East Coast. I'm from Boston. I didn't know much about her, maybe nothing about her. But when I started to kind of spend time in LA here and there, I would hear about her. And then eventually I saw her and, uh, and then I kind of was intrigued and I asked more about her and the more that I asked about her, the more sort of my interest in her grew. So my exposure began when I started spending physical time in LA. Yeah, I, I knew her as the pink Corvette lady and I didn't know much until um, the show got closer to happening and, and auditioning was happening. Then I did real research on her, but I just always saw that pink Corvette around town. Hmm. What was your reaction to that you know, for, for all of you? To just like... It's bigger than life. Well, I had kind of mixed feelings because on the one hand, I heard of her. She was sort of known to me as sort of a legend. Uh, but on the other hand, when I actually saw her, she was selling merchandise out of the trunk of her car. And I thought, I, I, mm. I didn't realize legends do that. So there's <laughs> sort of this sort of a um, contradiction that I saw in her, which actually just deepened my interest in her. Mm. And Martin, being um, mm. new to her, what, what drew you to the series? Mm. Uh, the, I thought it was bananas. So I, I quite like it was uh, it was a, it was a slightly um, lurid, garish show, like, like she is, you know. And uh, and I and I liked that. And I talked to Lucy Cherniak, the director, and. Um, and I liked the way she was talking about it. So yeah, I kind of I found out more about Angeline, and she just yes, yeah, she just seemed like a well, it seemed like an interesting phenomenon, you know. Um, ex precisely that thing that Alex has just said. It's like you know, on the one hand, you know, you're a legend, but you're also quite it's you're living kind of hand to mouth in a way as well. So preserving this artificial picture of yourself while really doing mundane making ends meet stuff is kind of interesting i agree so all i was your... always oh, sure. no, sorry ahead. no go on no go on no go on go on i'd rather hear your answer yeah. than my talk my my answer is um, not great anyway i was just gonna say i've always <laughs> been <laughs> I, i've always had a weird sick like obsession with people similar to angeline my cl the closest thing growing up was paris hilton and i was just fascinated by her and all that she did and and kind of fascinated in this role that she played that was actually she was playing this character and and people underestimated her and maybe thought she was dumber than she was and even if you don't agree with what she's doing there is some I am impressed by the the hustle or the ability to create this persona and that was really interesting to me I gotta say you're wrong that was a great answer so I'm, okay. I'm glad we got thanks, it in Steven. there thanks for the <laughs> confidence boost. yeah Lucas thank See, you that was brilliant that's, thanks, that's what I'm here thanks, for thanks guys so all of your characters are in one way or another kind of under the spell of Angeline. Uh, what is it about her that's so alluring? Like for the characters? I think for, for Harold, my character, um, who's a man who has a massive billboard uh, business, I think he has self-confidence. She's, you know, I don't think he would have been, I think if she had looked like Lou Costello, I don't think he would have been under the spell. I think the fact that she's an attractive woman with big bosoms, I think does not hurt his, his allure over him, but also just the way she talks so self-confidently. Um, and just that she speaks with this almost sort of messianic vision of how I am going to be bigger than uh, life. Uh, he thinks, well, oh, I want a bit of that. I want to be a, a, a passenger on that ship. Yeah. For my character, uh, I play a journalist uh, at The Hollywood Reporter who covers um, the city and covers sort of the weird personalities that kind of shape and inform his understanding of the city. He was really drawn to how she is a reflection of the city, um, how she kind of carries um, the sort of contradictory elements of the city, the, the enigma and the weirdness and the extremes, but also sort of the darkness and 
um, superficiality of the city. Um, so he kind of views her as a synecdoche of the city. And I think that was kind of what drew him to learn more about her. My character, Max, is an aspiring filmmaker. And I think for him, he has no ties to the industry or nothing connecting him or helping him like Angeline did. So for him, she's kind of a role model or a guideline to making a bang or making a splash and making a name for himself. And you mentioned her physical transformation. Um, how was it working with Emmy, especially when you see her before and after and she comes out a completely different person? I thought that was amazing. Yeah, it was, it was incredible. I, I, there was a couple of days I was in makeup the same time as she was. And and that was, you know, she was doing that for, for a long time every day. That was a big makeup. And especially as the aging process happens, it became even longer. And um, yeah, it's, it is a real, it's quite spooky, uh, unsettling transformation, I found, actually. But I mean, she's completely in it. I mean, she completely inhabits that character. And the physical part of it, obviously. Uh, is a huge element to that. But, um, yeah, it was almost spooky for me, actually, <laughs> seeing how, yeah. seeing what Emmy is like and what she looks like, how she sounds and everything. And then two hours later, you're on set with her and it's like, yeah, this is, um, uh, it's like seeing, it's almost as if she's playing a different person, Steve. That's what it's, it's almost <laughs> like she's acting. It That's what freaked me out. <laughs> yeah. I didn't, I didn't think about that one. All right, well, well, I, I guess do that's now, my... do think about it. Yeah. I, I'm going to, I'm going to sit down and think yeah. about it all day today. I appreciate it. Martin, I'll watch it again. I, 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 didn't, I didn't even recognize you when I had my scene with you. I remember that. Oh, I remember you talking. Right, yeah. I truly, did. I forgot that <laughs> that was you. I, I have the no makeup is was. crazy, right? It's Abby Lyle is makeup. insanely good. Insane. insane. All right. Yeah, really. Now, now I feel like I'm, I'm uh, getting beat up a little bit. All right. Well, thank you so much for your no, time. No, I not. really do appreciate it. <laughs> no, no, no. I was being, I was being that serious. Was actually. Oh, See, that I was wasn't. Genuine. No, I wasn't even being condescending. I was. I'm not yeah, kidding. Yeah, yeah. I actually didn't recognize him on set. The I makeup swear to was. God. The makeup was really crazy. Genuine. Oh, yeah. It was. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. pretty incredible. Well, thank you for your time. I, I, I'm out of time. Thank you, Steve. So, uh, thank have you, a great Steve. day and, and congrats on the series. Thanks. Thank you. you very much, sir. Thank you. All right now. Thank you.